Hello everyone and very very warm welcome back to Tips with Milencio. Today there's not gonna be very much fishing but I'm going to show you who haven't uh, been doing a whole lot of pike fishing the very simple art of how to rig a soft plastic lure for pike fishing. So next up is my four favorite ways on how to rig them. The first one I'm going to show you is probably the rigging I use the most and that consists of a shallow screw and a stinger consisting of two separate hooks on attached swivels like this. This brand is Gator but I have changed hook from VMC to Gamakatsu because I like Gamakatsu more. Simple as that. Uh, so this way of rigging works good for the soft plastics that are a little bit bigger and this size of bait works perfect to rig with a shallow screw. But let's get to it. So what you want to do is you want to take uh, is that you want to grab the head of the lure just point it in as straight as you can and this might be a little tricky in the beginning but you'll get to it and then it's just to screw it in like this and it will hold for many 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 pike and this is the way of rigging soft plastic lures for fishing in shallow areas here you have it just straight in the lip of the shad and it will never ever break but of course you can't catch a pike on this, you also have to have some hooks. The way I attach my hooks to this shallow rigged rubber is I just put them in the bait lock like this. I put the lure and I put the stinger just like this. It's so simple. You see like this and this will never come off. Then it's just to point out where you want the hooks to be and you don't want to have it too tight because then the action of the rubber will get hurt. You don't want to have it too soft because then you might lose more fish. But what's important to think about when you rig your soft plastic is that most of the pike will take the bait close to the head. If the pike take close to the tail they will never be able to eat in real life. So for this particular lure you might could have chosen a longer stinger but my opinion is still that most of the pike will take close to the head and of course it's possible to rig that way on smaller rubber just use a smaller stinger like this one with only one hook and you'll be good. Let's head over to tips number two. And this is exactly as the last one except for that it has some weight attached to it. This one is called BFT Flex Head and this one I use uh, when I go deep, uh, deep water pike fishing. Preferably on the spring, sometimes in the summer when you want to fish real fast but uh, and the, with the shallow screw it goes up into the surface then I put on a BFT Flex Head and it's really simple, it's, it's just the same. And you might see that I only have one hook on this one, even though I have a pretty big rubber. But this is all up to your own preferences. Sometimes the pike are really in the mood of taking your bait, and then one hook is enough. And sometimes, sometimes you need two hooks. But just like this, it's perfect. What's good with the BFT flex head is that you also have a ring here where you can attach a stinger. And you can do it this way or you can put that one in the bait lock as well. Then it's just to put the spike in that holds your lure, that holds your hook. So these guys are available in a lot of different sizes but we mostly use between 5 and 25 grams. But around 10-15 grams is usually pretty good if you fish around 2 to 4 meters which most of the guys do. But if you fish more deeper use the heavier head, simple mats. So the next way to rig a rubber is probably a way that has been a little bit forgotten the last couple of years due to uh, the convenience of the flex head. But that's just a regular jig skull. This is how a lot of guys do perch fishing but it works really good for pike fishing as well. This is something I use mostly on smaller baits, not on big baits. Let me be clear with that because my opinion is that you want to have two hooks on the belly instead. But for example, on, on lures between 12 and 15, maybe even 17 centimeters, in the size 8.0 to 12.0 works perfect. You want to have it somewhat in the middle of the lure. You want, don't want to have it too close like this, and definitely not too far back like this, because then it will kill the action of the shad. So the advantages you get from fishing with a jig head is a few. 
For once you have the hook point upwards all the times, which means you can fish easier through weeds. Not though as good as a weedless hook, but still pretty good. But the main advantage is that you can fish close to the bottom. Since the, since the jig head is upwards, when it bounces to the bottom, it will never get stuck in something. This might be a little bit tricky in the beginning. But what I do is I measure how I want to have it. Then I just put a hook mark in the jig, just like that. So I know where the jig will pop up. What I do then is take the center of the head and fold it in, making sure that it's straight like this, straight like this. And then it's just a thread on like a worm. And now I look at this mark that I make and making sure that it comes up exactly where I want it to pop up. Then it's just to thread on. Sometimes when the pike are not in the mood, it might be good to put a drip of super glue but I don't think that's necessary. Then it's just to thread it all the way like this and here is your jig head rigged soft plastic for pike fishing. So my last uh, rigging tips for the day is a weedless hook. A weedless hook, the absolute best advantage you have with this one is that you can cast all the way inside the weeds. And what you do then is that you will get the pike that your bodies can't and this might be this might seem a bit tricky to learn how to rig but it really isn't hard at all what you have is that you have this small uh, pin it's like a, the shallow screw but much shorter and then you have this big wide gap hook and what you do is that you just take any lure uh, this uh, when you're fishing with a weedless hook it's pretty important that it's not too high like this because then there won't be any, any room for the hook to slide down, which, I, I'm, which I'm about to show you. So here, for example, we have this curly tail that I'm going to rig like this. Just to screw it in, in the nose of the lure. And try to keep it as straight on as you possibly can. So you see like this, now it's pretty straight on like this. When I, I usually test it and just hang it like this and see that it's straight. What you then do is that you turn it around like this. And then now I think you start to see where we're going. So you see, this is where I want to have it. So what I do is I make a mark where I want the hook to go in over there. And I do a mark over there where I want the hook to pop out. Just a little, little scratch in the rubber. I then twist and turn the rubber a little bit like this and put it in where I put my mark and I get it out where I put the mark. So here you have a perfectly rigged weedless hook. So now this one works like this. You might think that but there's no hook in here but usually the pike will take it pretty violent. They come like this and they punch it through and then you set the hook and the fish get stuck. So the thing with these guys is that the hook ratio is really not as good as with the other riggings but you can cast all the way inside the weeds and you can catch a lot more fish than your buddies who don't own a weedless hook. So even if you lose every second fish you will still get more fish than your buddies. I have one good tip for when you do get the strike and that's to set the hook upwards like this instead of sideways because if you do it sideways you will lose more fish but if you do it upwards then the hook point will get stuck in the lip of the mouth. So to sum it up this is the four ways I rig my pike rubbers. We have the weedless hook, we have the flex head with the, the heavy flex head, then we have the jig hook and we have the shallow rig. And if you practice a little bit at home, you will learn the art of how to rig a soft plastic lure. Thank you so much for tuning in in this little pike fishing tutorial for those of you who is about to get started in this wonderful sport. I hope you all are having a great summer and we'll see you back next week in another episode. Ciao!